How is the Dallas show this weekend? Dallas show is, uh, you know, the, well, let me s start by saying the hobbies, the hobby is in a good place. The hobby's in good hands. And uh, Dallas shows have been really busy rocking, a lot of deals going on. And, uh, you know, it started yesterday. It was probably one of the busiest Fridays that I've seen at a show um, that I've, it might have, I might put it in my top two best Fridays in terms of traffic and action uh, that I've seen probably within the last, I'm going to say 12 months. And you've been least. to lots of shows in the last 12 months. I mean, I follow you on Instagram. You're constantly putting out content, showing the action at the shows to say that this is the top two Friday of all time. Like what, what's the vibe like in the room this weekend? Uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of positive vibes. I mean, um, you know, with the NBA going into the playoffs right now and, and the NFL season coming to a, to an end, um, it's even though there's only just like really one sport going. No, no disrespect to hockey and all, but uh, uh, in <laughs> well, terms of the you know uh, buying and selling basketball is where it's at right now, right? So, um, you know, a lot of selling. Obviously, a lot of people looking to sell and move cards or trade into cards and stuff. Um, and uh, I'm seeing you know a lot of that. And what on. players are you finding are people really honing in on today? Uh, boy, I'll tell you, you know, of course, you know, Ja Moran is pretty hot, right? So a lot of people are looking for a lot of Ja Moran. Uh, Kevin, Kevin Durant, I'm um, seeing a lot of people with Kevin Durant. I saw a couple of big sales um, on uh, Devin Booker, uh, some really big Devin Booker, one that went on just right next to me. Uh, with the the gentleman that was uh, exhibiting right next to me, he sold a really big Devin Booker card, um, and then of course with the news today, I mean, there's been a lot of spark with uh, Zion Williamson. So that's uh, hit the marketplace floor around like, you know, eleven eleven thirty a.m. with that news that he was potentially coming back, uh, and uh, that sort of sparked a, a big interest in his cards. Like people were actually looking to buy them again, or were they trying to? Were they trying to? Were people trying to scoop them up before? sellers adjusted their prices back up or did sellers ever even adjust their prices down on, on, on Zion? Yeah. I mean, people looking to buy, you know, a lot of people looking, looking to buy, looking to speculate with him uh, potentially come back. Now, what about, can you speak a little bit to the split on the show floor between vintage and modern and speak to the vintage presence and sort of uh, what, what players or specific cards you've seen out on the floor that impressed you or that you saw other people, uh, really focusing in on? Uh, I'd probably say somewhere in that, you know, 75-25 range, maybe closer to 80-20 on modern versus vintage. Um, and you can, usually you can gauge the vintage market by how many big vintage cards are out there, how many mantles are out on, on the marketplace floor or Mays or Jackie Robinson and stuff. Um, but it seems like, you know, there's always been, you know, at the shows at least – in Dallas, um, a, a good assortment of vintage uh, dealers. And, um, you know, I think that uh, the vintage market has been acting strong from what I see. And, you know, people are starting to maybe that they haven't ever delved into the vintage market. They've always been in modern are now starting to, you know, look into the Mickey Mantles of the world or the Willie Mays or Wilt Chamberlain's and Bill Russell's and, and stuff. Guys that I um, have been that I have watched over the last year and a half or a couple of years that have been preferably modern flippers, never really see them with vintage. And now I'm starting to see them delve into some big vintage cards. We had an opportunity to do a deal today. Of course, we funded a sports card advance to help out somebody that acquired a 1952 Topps Mickey Mantle card. We dropped that video in our feed. So uh, that, uh, that was a pretty good deal day. That was uh, probably one of the only few mantles on the floor today. So yeah, very nice. Uh... 52 tops Mickey Mantle. That's that's quite the card. What else? Uh, what other sort of cards or or players? What are you looking for? Uh, what are you looking for when you're at the show? Uh, we'll get to the sports card advance in your business shortly. But what are you looking for as far as where you want to deploy capital uh, for for your own long term holds? And do you do you long term hold any card? Are are you looking for some of those blue chips to hold for like five plus years? And if so. Where, where, where would you put your money? Yeah, so it's, it's a good question. You know, a lot of people always ask me, and I, I've always been a vintage collector, 
through and through. And I believe in the vintage market, um, a lot less volatile, um, high grade vintage. Um, uh, you know, after coming back into the market uh, about a couple, a few years ago, I've I've learned that high grade vintage is really where it's at in terms of um, you know the low population and what real collectors and real investors really want to put big money into, which is high grade vintage cards. You know the this the eights and sevens, eights and nines of the world. So um, you know I'm always down to you know purchase a big vintage card. You know in high grade. So. Uh, whether it's Mickey Mantle or Willie Mays or Jackie Robinson or Hank Aaron, uh, and and then even when you go over to some of the other sports in basketball, you know it's the same run of guys, right? The Bill Russells, the Will Chamber, Will Chamberlains of the world, um, Larry Bird, uh, of course Jordan, um, and you know coming over to football, you know Joe Montana and uh, Jim Brown. I am in, uh, you know, I'm in the hunt for a Joe Montana PSA 10. It's on top of my list. Um, I believe the card is undervalued when you compare him to, let's say, Brady. He won five Super Bowls. Um, the only difference between him and Brady is that he's never lost a Super Bowl. So I really want to add that to my collection, a Montana PSA 10 super low pop, a little over 100 or something like that. So I think it, there's a lot of opportunity for you know a card like Joe Montana and a PSA 10. I completely agree with you on, on the Montana. And I, I, you know, I do believe the PSA 10 is slightly over a population of 100. Yeah. So that that is a rare card for somebody who, you know, in the absence of Brady would likely be considered the goat for a football. If even on, you know, for those that, you know, can't, you know, go after the PSA 10, the PSA 9 Joe Montana also, I believe, is undervalued. If you compare his PSA 9 to, let's say, a Brady, uh, t you know, Topps Chrome or, some, or Bowman Chrome or something like that, you know, I think you can get into a Joe Montana for less than a couple thousand dollars for a PSA 9.